This beam of light meets the face of the glass block at right angles. It then passes straight through. If the beam meets the block at a sharper angle, then as it enters it bends or refracts. Similarly, as it leaves it refracts, but back in the other direction. Notice also that a small amount of the light reflects at the face as it enters, and again at the face as it leaves. Looking at this on the diagram, the ray of light we're interested in is the one that goes right through the block. However, it is important that we recognise that there is some reflection at each of the two faces. As the beam is turned, it meets the face at a sharper angle, and the amount of refraction increases. The light refracts in one direction as it enters the block, and then back the other way as it leaves. The final direction which it's travelling is the same as before, but shifted across. Going back to the diagram of the light travelling through the block, we'll turn this through 90 degrees and then follow the path of two waves of light going through. The waves travel quickly through the air and then as they reach the dense material of the block, they slow down. As they leave the block, again they speed up. Because the waves are travelling at an angle to the face, one edge reaches the block first and slows down first. This change of speed causes the direction to change. On reaching the other side of the block, the same edge speeds up first, and so the direction swings back the other way. Here the points are briefly summarised, should you wish to take notes. The frequency of the waves is constant, determined only by the frequency of the source. However, the wavelength varies depending on the speed of the wave. As the waves enter the block and slow down, they bunch up. The wavelength is smaller. As they leave and speed up, the waves spread out. The wavelength is larger, returning to its original value. In order to explain the geometry and algebra behind this, we'll quickly draw out a block and then trace through it a ray of light. The light leaving the block is parallel to the incident ray but shifted over. We'll draw in the normals and mark the angle of instance and refraction as the light first enters the block. The change of angle as the light enters the block is due to it slowing down. To calculate this change of angle we use Snell's law. That states that the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant for that pair of materials, in this case air and glass. This constant is called the refractive index and is usually written with the Greek symbol mu. In this case with a subscript A and a subscript G to show that it is the refractive index from air to glass. Although I won't explain the geometry here, that refractive index is simply related to the speed of light in air and the speed of light in glass. The refractive index equals the speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in glass. Very quickly writing that in symbol form, sine i over sine r, the refractive index, is c, the speed of light in air, divided by c, the speed of light in glass. For common glass, such as window glass, that refractive index is likely to be about 1.5, though with more dense materials added, such as lead, it can be as high as 1.6 and even 1.7. There are no units for refractive index because it is a ratio of two quantities. If we quickly rub this out and look at the ray of light as it leaves the block, it speeds up and bends away from the normal. We have a new angle of incidence that's inside the glass and a new angle of refraction outside the glass. 
Again, the change of angle depends upon the change of speed, in this case increasing as it moves from the glass into the air. The same law applies. The sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction is a constant. This is the refractive index from glass to air. It is the inverse of the refractive index from air to glass. Thank you for watching.